I am happy to have everyone here today. Joining us remotely is uh, Stephen Barnes. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, and I've uh, been a special science fiction novelist for close to 40 years. I'm the current chairman of the board of directors for the Los Angeles Science Fantasy Society. Hi, I'm Rob Persick, and uh, I've done a lot of things. I've worked in the motion picture business, the TV industry, uh, the music industry, the game industry. I'm Charlie Kyoto. Uh, I have a company with my brothers, the Kyoto Brothers Productions. Davey Perez. Dave, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I'm also born and raised in uh, Los Angeles, a uh, local guy. Uh, I've been working in television for the past 10 years, primarily as a writer and producer. We're all very aware of the technological things that are going on. Technology, and they can make anything now. The future of technology and science is amazing. My concern... Because I always look at the human factor. All you need is one con, and you have a horrific future. You could be unhappy without technology, just the same as ha unhappy with it. The fact that we're Zooming with a, a colleague right now is, is a great use of technology. Being able to stay connected, it's your personal engagement with it that is going to essentially create your experience with it. One can say that Silicon Valley and the tech moguls that have really kind of, in, in large part, have taken over what is Hollywood, the most powerful companies that will likely one day own Disney and all the studios, we got Amazon and Apple. And because they, they make a lot of their money from products that have nothing to do with tele, film or television, they have a lot of revenue. You know, when you see that and you see how much influence it can have over our political system and our democracy, I think it's hard, you know, not for writers who often are, aren't necessarily at the top of the echelon to imagine and fantasize about a, you know, a world that can be a bit dystopian with unfettered technology. It started with Mary Shelley during the Industrial Revolution with Frankenstein, and it's continued today with Terminator. I, I really do think that people are underestimating what AI is gonna do, whether or not it's to actually feel the emotion. There are probably computer programs that can fake you out right now. I, I don't fear that future. The only thing I'm afraid of is people thinking we'll never get there when we're already most of the way there. With computers and machinery taking the the average jobs, which is actually great. Institute a universal income or make sure everyone's basic needs are met. They're all working towards society because they no longer have to worry about the day-to-day -day grinds. If you talk to people that are developing artificial intelligence, they'll, they'll tell you that's not the scenario to be concerned about. It. Those behaviors that you're talking about are human behaviors. Machines don't have those motivations. They're not built with those motivations. They don't have 100 million years of evolutionary history that dictated those emotions. The things to be concerned about with, with artificial intelligence, bad data and bias in data, the training data, is already training machines to be biased. First, great respect to you. Nicholas, for creating a new story world at a time when we're all concerned about big platforms degrading human creativity and, and creating, you know, the 15th version of the Avengers movie. Like, you actually came up with something new. So way to go, man. That's like a great statement. It's almost like a statement of defiance, right? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to play an original song I wrote for E-Junkie. This is Daniel Glickman playing piano. Andrew is going to be singing for us. question was posed a moment ago, and I think it's a good question to think about, is uh, does our technology make us happy? That's at the core of Nicholas's book. I think it's an interesting thing to think about. To the extent mm. that our technology kindles desires in us that are unmet, like an itch that we can't scratch, that's a bad thing. That's suffering. The book E-Junkie was inspired by a lot of Buddhist principles, and one of the central premises is, is there a value to suffering? Let's just say we are successful and we AI and everything we do eventually leads to us figuring it out. Will it make the world a better place? And I want to really, really um, express my my gratitude for every one of the panelists that came out and uh, presented themselves and just contributed to what was such a fun, lively conversation.